Right guys and girls, Mark Crossfield here today. We're going to talk about hitting more fairways or hitting the ball more in play off the tee. Something that everyone definitely struggles with. So let's think about some practical tips to try and help you get that ball in play a little bit more, which will help you lower those scores. Point number one, I would love to see amateur golfers get better at picking some sensible targets. What target I choose from the tee, so where I want my ball to go, is crucial for me managing the good and the bad shots that we're all going to hit. We're gonna hit bad shots. The best players in the world hit bad shots. If you look at these stats here from ShotScope, you can see, you know, around 50%, every handicap range is hitting. It's amazing, every handicap fairway hit is hitting about 50% of the fairways. We'll talk about that as we go on and the importance of fairway is the last tip which we'll talk about. But that means they're missing it 50% or just over of the time, they're missing the fairway. Meaning the target I choose is as important as any aspect of this process process of hitting this fairway. So for me on this hole, we've got out of bounds down the right. We've got to another hole to the left. So the whole world to the left. So my target, where I want my ball to go for the perfect drive, is actually right of the first bunker here. But that's really close to the out of bounds. And you've seen the percentage of fairways hit and fairway missed. If I choose that as my target, that means I'm gonna have a miss left and right of that. And right of that hits the out of bounds. So what I do on this hole is I simply just shift my target. So I'm gonna aim at these trees, basic clump of trees in the distance. Because if I push my drive from there, which I can do, it's going to land on the fairway and be A1 position, I'll be a hero. If it pulls, I've got another hole, I'll end up in the rough, but I'm still finding it. Now, if it goes straight, it'll end up in a bunker, but I can make the green in three. It's a par five. If I hit that bunker, I'm gonna be able to move it at least 100 yards out, not the biggest lip. And the chances of my ball landing in that bunker, if you think about the size of that bunker, it's really, really small. The amount of amateurs who pick targets more on the optimum outcome rather than the favored outcome does absolutely amaze me, bearing in mind it's a club we all say we struggle with. Get those targets optimized around where the trouble is you're gonna find you hit a ball, a few more balls in play. And you're gonna collect some lower scores. So I've slightly towed it, I've pushed it, and it's now absolutely perfect. If I hit that shot aiming where that ball's finished, definitely flirting with the out of bounds. And the green keepers did come and move the markers halfway through filming that for any of the keen eyed people who saw the markers disappear in the edit there. I'm out here very early. Right, tip number two and three. We will separate them, but basically it's the title of what battles do you want to face? And believe me when I say good players try not to battle much at all. They take the easy option. And yes, we've all seen Tiger out of the bunker hitting it to like 10 foot over the water and all that kind of stuff. But that's in situations where he hasn't got a choice to take a battle or not. He just has to take it on. Most of the time, you've got a choice. So what I mean, I've hit my first few drives today and I've lost the ball off to the right each time. So not loads, but I certainly didn't threaten the left side at all. So I've got two options. I can battle. I might have a fort or something, a swing fort to try and beat that fault that I don't want to see. Or what I can do, which is what I would do nine times out of 10 if I was out here playing, is I'm now just going to play that shape. So my target, which would be the middle of this fairway, now shifts. So from the middle here to the left side. So I know I'm gonna get that slight curve off to the right, I'm playing my shape. The amount of amateurs I see banging their head against a brick wall and just either taking the battle on every hole on the course, rather than playing the patterns that they see as quick as possible, astounds me. Good players, what they'll do is they spot any patterns in their game, shape-wise, shot-wise, they'll start playing it and often take the battle more to the practice area. So up the left, hoping I get the same shape I've seen on my first few drives. Perfect, up the left, and it's just cut back pretty much left side to middle. Take that all day long. Spotting those shapes as early as possible, Shot, uh, spotting those patterns, and then just working them that day as hard as you can could really allow you to lower those scores and get the most out of your day. Now, there's a contradiction to this point as well, and this is where you need to choose what works best for you, which is why I say which battles do you want to take on or not. That might make me too nervous. I might not feel like I'm comfortable aiming down the left because I might get a quick left. So, do you have a swing fort to try and switch the patterns as quick as possible? 
Let's show you what I mean. So the second part of what battles should you take on is there's also a time to think about taking that battle on, approaching it, at, at, like head first. So take this hole, we've got plenty of room on the left. It's a narrow shoot we're hitting down and ideally I want to hit my ball in play on our fairway, but we've got out of bounds on the right. I have a swing fort that will make the ball turn a little bit more left and then I have another swing fort that makes the ball turn generally a little bit more right. So remember, I'm tailing it slightly off to the right. I've still got the option of aiming up the left here, but the trouble with that is if I bullet one straight, I feel like I'm gonna tangle with the trees. So this might be where all that practice comes into play. So this is where I'm gonna aim my target down the middle of the fairway with a swing fort I know most of the time will turn the ball left. So for me, that swing fort is I feel on my downswing that I stay in this lead foot for a bit longer rather than turning out of the ball. And that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what your swing fort is compared to mine. It's that you have a swing fort that will move the ball or your shot pattern to a slightly different side. If you've got this tool, it is such a key to upping your fairways hit and upping your balls in play stats. So you've got a second shot into the green. In my students, I say to them, look, we need you less one dimensional. We need you to be able to handle certain situations. And one of the situations which we all face is having a bad day off the tee. So you've got your aiming option. You can aim away from the trouble. You've got your aiming up the left because you're losing it to the right or vice versa. I'm turning too many over, so I'm going to aim further right and just play that shape. But also you need some skills in your movements to try and help you control this outside as well. And this is generally what I would work on with most of my lessons. You find their shot pattern, you learn to play that shot pattern, and then you learn to calm it down and control it. And there's certain holes when you go on the course with lessons and like this one, trouble up the right. And I would say to them, hey student, remember those wrist angles we talked about or that setup, whatever the swing fix is, the calm down, say their cut shot, let's do it loads here. Because if they overdo the action, so if I overdo my action, I'm turning it left onto another fairway. Picking your battles and when to fight them is so key to squeezing out a little bit more fairways hit, a little bit more balls in play. You'll be amazed, just one or two fairways around absolutely skyrockets your fairway percentage. Oh, lovely, stayed in my left side a little bit longer. That ball stayed pretty straight down the middle. Didn't turn left, but that's kind of like my worst case scenario with that swing fort. Got away, not hitting it out of bounds. And that's the big question I want you to ask yourself. Have you got a swing fort that moves your shot pattern to a different side? It doesn't mean it's a better swing. It doesn't mean you're a better player because you missed the average 20 yards right and now you're missing 20 yards left. But think about it out on the course. There are situations where 20 yards left misses are way better than 20 yards right. If you have those two misses, you're going to be able to navigate yourself around those trickier situations out on the golf course. Take that pressure off a little bit. And then the final two tip to give you your top five tips is free wood for safety. This is one I see so often with students. The size difference in hitting area from an average fairway, and this is quite a game improvement fairway to your driver, is quite big in then the increased MOI, so resistance to twist that might help keep ball speeds up, is huge, lower with this one, higher with the driver. So free wood for safety, often for your average amateur, means that they don't really hit it any straighter, but they do generally hit it shorter. The stats here show it's quite amazing how similar the free wood to the driver is, but also what's noticeable is that the free wood does just go shorter. Bearing in mind, strike is generally the biggest issue with handicapped golfers and as you go up through the handicaps, you notice that more dropping back to a free wood because it feels like you might hit the fairway more is often a bad decision. Now you might be an outlier and you do hit your free wood straighter than your driver. So this information doesn't apply to you. And if you've got stats and collect stats, you'll know that already. So you'll know that this part doesn't really respond to you. But most amateurs I play with, when we do playing lessons, they run to their free wood. I am straight on them, get the driver out. Let's have the bigger head. I don't see them hit their fairway woods any straighter. And I also see that they do hit it shorter and the stats back that up as well from people like Shotscope. Free wood for safety is definitely a negative play for so many golfers. Now there are situations, you know, where things cross the fairway, where the driver could run into them and the free wood won't reach. Absolutely, free wood for safety that way, but free wood for safety left and right 
is a really negative option for so many players. And for me here, someone who hits my fairway wood relatively good, I look down at this ball, if this was my first shot of the day, and I just see less club face, I would so much rather have my driver knowing that this free wood from my stats is pretty much the same accuracy as my driver. It's literally cross hazards that would make me move to my free wood over my driver, very rarely left and right. Try really get away from thinking free wood for safety is an option. It hurts so many of you. And that leads me on to my final point, which is the crucial point here, is be careful how much you value fairway. Even though this video is about hitting more of them, hitting more of them could help lower your scores. But really, as I've said in lots of this video, keeping the ball in play is the option. Keeping the ball in play and moving it as far as you can up there is the real game. And this is what I mean, from 140 out, this is the rough. So in effect, I've missed my fairway, and you'll find this in lots of UK courses. This isn't that unplayable. My proximity from here, compared to being on the fairway, I've skipped ahead, this one isn't quite cut yet, but it will be, is gonna be minuscule. To try and put that premium on always hitting that real cut grass, is often not the answer. And that's what makes people go to free woods off the tee rather than drivers. So they link these two tips. Now, if you play a course where the rough looks more like this, yeah, absolutely. You are gonna put that premium on hitting that short stuff. And again, from my stats, that doesn't mean hitting a free wood over a driver. And if you look at yours, if you collect them, it'll be the same. Just watch out on taking that premium to the fairway. Hitting the balls far down there in play for lots of golfers is gonna be a much better option than trying to hit a 200 yard shot back here on the fairway that leaves you 200 yards in rather than a 250 shot up here which will be in any of this between that hedge and this hedge which is going to leave you 150 in because your proximity to the next shot to the pin from 150 over 200 is going to be closer get the ball as far down there as in play as you can free wood off the tee obviously if you're that person that hits that club and loves it like i ain't telling stenson to stop it in his free wood off the tee he loves that club doesn't he there's always going to be outliers but for the average golfer get it down there and why bearing in mind that so many of you struggle with strike do you choose then to go to a club that's harder to get results out of for strike because of lower MRI and low and basically real estate of face out there let me know if these tips help and uh, let me know in the comments down below as always if you want to see some other ideas of how to hit more fairways or better drives post down there and we'll do a video to try and help you good luck with your golf everybody see you in the next video